Hello, Jim Jam. Um, you wanted to know how to get the dog out of this picture here. Um, and I was going to do it for you. And I uh, said you didn't want me to do that. And I want you to, uh, to uh, figure it out on your own, because that's what you want to do. So I thought I'd maybe, I, I tried to kind of sort of explain it to you earlier how to get the dog out and I don't know if that what I gave you was enough so I'm gonna give you uh, kind of a walkthrough of how to do that you're using GIMP um, so hopefully you can kind of extract what you need to do there from this um, if you can't, then uh, Photoshop has a 30-day 30 30, 30 day trial that you can uh, try out and uh, uh, at least get this done. So um, here we go. I'm gonna stop talking now and try to, or I'm gonna just talk and do this. So uh, first thing I'm gonna do is just make a solid color background. Uh, just gonna go white for doesn't matter. Uh, then I'm going to duplicate the main layer here. I always do redundant stuff like this just in case I mess up what I'm doing. Um, take a uh, polygon selection tool. Doesn't You can use the other selection tools, but we're just going to take the dog out here. And layer via copy. So whatever similar control is via GIMP. Just do that. Uh, we're just going to make it that. Um, so we just have a copy of the dog on top of the white layer that we made. Uh, and I hid the um, original layer there. I have this redundant layer here just in case. I'm just going to hide that for whatever reason. Um, so from here I am uh, going to make a smart layer with uh, levels adjustment. And so what this does is it uh, adjusts like where the relative black, white, and medium levels are. It's probably a more intelligent way of explaining it, but uh, uh, I'll just show you. So I bring down the white here, and it sets the white. Like, if I bring it towards this, like, I, you have to pay attention to this curve, so, like, there's no, for the, do this is the dog layer that it's, it's referencing, or it's kind of referencing the whole thing, but here's, like, all the, the actual picture information here, but, uh, you can see, like, if this is a picture, uh, there's no, everything takes place here, so you might as well just bring this down here, and you can see, what 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 we perceive as white these this paper or whatever it's actually right about there so you can see that it starts blending in with the actual pure white here so uh, yeah you just want to bring that in closer the gray and maybe towards the middle of it maybe not so much but actually just focus on the black and bring that in and, and, and that's kind of sloppy but and then don't yeah don't overthink this <laughs> I'm overthinking it right now but uh, you can actually probably bring the white in more but now it's getting too washed out so we're gonna bring this gray in here and just play with it I think I'm uh, explaining explaining it more than it Actually deserve. You just kind of have to get a feel for it. And I know you said you wanted some of the lighter details to show up, and so this is going to be up to you to kind of figure out. So I can see here, there's kind of like a little bit of fluff here in the dog, and if you bring it in too much, it starts to disappear. So keep it there. Maybe bring the grays up a little bit. And then bring the whites down a little bit more, but I think that's as, as good as we're gonna get. So maybe right about there. 
bring the grays down a little bit darker some more. So yeah, ignore all the explanation I was trying to give earlier. Just try to get a feel for it and just play with it and massage it until it works right. So there you have the grays and the levels all set out. Um, from here I'll uh, add another smart filter thing, but sugar smart adjustment. I don't even know what they're called. I just press things and I know where they're at. But uh, we're going to desaturate it. Uh, and let me explain why I desaturate. So when I, the next step I'm going to do is create a red layer. I Technically, I, I think you can do this with any other color, but I just kind of stick with red. And um, go to a blend mode of of uh, screen and what screen does is it uh, oh, it's hard to explain right now but uh, um, basically it's gonna make anything uh, the, the brighter a background color is is it's uh, it's gonna get closer to white and so if it's already white it's just gonna stay white and if it's a dark color it's gonna kind of pick up the color of the foreground layer and so uh, because um, I we have these darker outlines and we have a red foreground layer it, it, you can see that it's picking up the red color but it, if, I don't know if you can pick this up very well but it's actually kind of pink which doesn't make any sense I mean it does make sense but like it's not what you want you want this to be pure red so I made that adjustment layer, so we're going back, we're hiding the red layer, and we are um, going back to our, our hue saturation uh, smart filter here, whatever it's called, smart adjustment. Let's see if it actually hover states. Oh, it's, yeah, adjustment layer. Okay, there we go. So uh, we added one of those, and then we're going to just desaturate it. Then when we turn the red on, you can see that, if or hopefully you can see that this is pure red versus the pink, because now I've, I've removed the color of the background layer, which had a, a blue tint. So there's the pink, red, pink, red, pink, red. Uh, so the, now it's just a pure red illustration. Um, so from here, whatever the uh, GIMP equivalent is here, we're going to, oh, you can't really see what I pressed up here. I cropped it out, but um, we have uh, in Photoshop the selection menu, and then I do color range. And color range has these channels you can select from. Uh, and I, like I said, I usually just stick with red. Yellow, I feel, might get too close to the white spectrum, and so I, I, I haven't tested it out, like, ever. And I'm sure there's some kind of, like, uh, uh, math I can figure out about which one is, is better. And I have a feeling it's actually red, but whatever. It works well enough just to stick with red, but, uh... For if for some reason you want to make this level or this layer here any other color, it would probably work well enough. I imagine with green and blue, but we're just going to stick with red. Um, so you can see the dog picks up well here. You see a preview of a selection. You don't need to touch with anything else. Press OK, and we get a nice selection of the dog. And this, so from here, it's gonna hide everything else, and then make a new um, solid color layer of that. And while the selection is still in place, and then it doesn't matter what color you choose here, and I'll show you why. So we're gonna do this kind of periwinkle color here, and uh, now you can see that the selection that we had automatically makes a mask here. 
and uh, we can turn off this white layer here and it's perfectly transparent um, so yeah and then you can change the background layer as much as you want change it to this brick red doesn't matter because the transparency is nice and masked off and so you can do whatever you want uh, you can change it to blue you can still see it doesn't stand out as much because it's uh, uh, I think the uh, like we said we had a periwinkle color here but if you change it to black then it stands out nice and neatly here so you can change these independently because we made these just a color fill layer and they have a mask as opposed to like uh, uh, a layer where the transparency and and the color are, are the same kind of uh, uh, the same piece uh, as opposed to separated by color and mask like for example if we let's just duplicate this really quick and then uh, rasterize layer it's a uh, Here's an, easy, here's an easy way to always figure this shit out, which is group it. Put in a group, that's Command-G, probably Control-G on, on Windows. Put it all in group, merge group. Now it's just one thing. But the problem here is, uh, well now you can no longer change the color. I mean, you can change the color if you did uh, like hue saturation and colorize and brighten that up or whatever so now it's you can do color like that but it's uh like if you just wanted to expand it then yeah you just everything's all mixed up you don't you like you don't have a separate uh channel for transparency and color it's just way too way too much stuff to fuck up so just go back to what you had um, like you can even make this white and uh, you don't even have to worry about the color layer you just pick what you want and you just set it so but then you when you want to start messing with the outlines then you click on the mask here so color mask color mask and you can do this again um, let's say you had a uh, it's just filter uh, so actually we'll do this we'll make a black layer here we'll make noise and noise da -da -da. so we have a noise layer here um, whatever and then if we put we copy the dog mask here it's probably not the best example, but the mask is now applied to the, this, uh, I'm scrolling out of view, to this, uh, noise, uh, <laughs> to this noise layer. Oh god, go back, go back, Just stop, um, okay, the, no, okay, okay, I think right there right there so you have this noise layer with a mask um, like if I did a I just painted a let's, let's get a bright green here the mask is completely independent so I mean like let's see we're doing a like crazy illustration uh, you want to do like I've done this in some illustrations you want brown here for the face but maybe the coat of the dog is more of a of a, a copper color or something so you do red here and whatever or if you just want if you just want to uh, change it up completely you just 
covered up with blue, and because it's, uh, the layer is completely separate from transparency, it's, it's a lot more idiot proof. Uh, click something off. So yeah, you can just, uh, do whatever you want with, um, color this way. So we have a dark blue here. Um, Red, probably over demonstrating it at this point. So yeah, you just do whatever you want here. Um, and then uh, since the mask is separate, we're gonna go back to our our white version here. Uh, you can just click on the mask, and when you're in a mask mode, at least in Photoshop, you your uh, your color selection here switches to grayscale. So color, grayscale, and in fact, if you, if you have, like, we have this pinkish, reddish color here, if we click to the mask, yeah, okay, let's never ignore that last couple seconds of tips. Anyway, so you switch to grayscale for colors here when you're on your mask mode here, and uh, all that means it is alpha channels, transparency channels, or whatever you want to call it. Are, uh, are just grayscale, so you don't need to worry about what color is what. And uh, black is transparent. So you see here, there's a, everything is black, so you can see through to the blue here. And then you have this little bit of white, and that's the dog. And so black is transparent, white is not. So you get uh, a brush with black here, and you just clean up these lines. size as necessary. And so we have like kind of a fluff here we were talking about earlier. You can just clean around that. some point you finish and it's all good enough then you figure out you know maybe you want it you want the background white you want the dog to be black you can see some of the cleanup that we already did we didn't bother with the rest but you can go ahead and do that and uh do you can save it from here or like you can uh turn off the uh the white layer and you have a nice transparent dog and you could uh, uh, just paste this on top of other stuff and the transparency will show up if you saved it in a transparent kind of file like a PNG or whatever and uh, yeah that's that's how I do uh, clean up of line art and hopefully you can translate this into something you can use and I need to shut up now. Bye. Well, when I close the recording, I'm gonna fucking close the recording. Oh yeah, I need to press escape. Uh...